Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we're going to be taking a look at a lot of laptops over the next couple of weeks because we're in that back to school season and the first one up on the docket is this one from Lenovo. This is their Yoga 9i. This is a two in one so you can flip it around and turn it into a tablet or a little display thing here like we've seen in the past. And this one is powered by an Intel i7-1360P processor. We're going to take a closer look at this laptop and what it's all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point at the time I'm shooting this video is about $1,400 to start over at Best Buy. Like many of these Lenovo devices, there are a number of different configurations depending on where you're looking. So you'll see different prices accordingly. Now, as I mentioned, this has an i7-1360P processor from Intel. That is the current generation chip. It has 16 gigabytes of non-upgradable RAM and one terabyte of storage on board, which is an NVMe SSD. This one has a 14-inch display which is their 4K 3840 by 2400 unit. And this is an OLED and it runs at 60 Hertz. There's also a lower resolution display that runs a little faster at 90 Hertz. It looks really nice as you would expect from an OLED. You've got very nice contrast ratios, very deep blacks. It looks spectacular. Uh, but it's not all that bright. It's 400 nits. It looks a little brighter than it appears on camera right now, but it's not as bright as some of the more premium OLEDs out there. But I think for the price point, it's a very nice display and it looks really good for doing photo editing and video editing and other things. And the reason why is because it does support 100% of DCI-P3 for its color. It also supports Dolby Vision HDR. Now the build quality on this feels very nice. There's no edges to it because you've got this nice metal curvature to the casing here on the lower side. It weighs about three pounds or 1.4 kilograms and it's all very nicely balanced too. So when I lift up the display here, the keyboard does not come with it. I always look for that when I am looking at build quality. So it's very well put together here. It's gonna feel very nice. And I think it's got some ruggedness to it because of that metal design. The corners here feel really solid. Now this also has a nice speaker bar that's integrated into the hinge. And this will move a bit as you change the laptop's configuration. The sound quality is great out of this for music, but also for spoken word podcasts and uh, conference calls. And of course, you can connect up headphones if you need something a little more immersive. But overall, from a fit and finish standpoint, it looks and sounds great. Now, like other Lenovo laptops, it's got a very nice keyboard. It is backlit. The keys are large and well spaced apart. And if you are upgrading from another Lenovo consumer laptop from a few years back, it is a very smooth transition with not much to get used to because they locked in their keyboard design a couple of years ago and it just works. It's a good keyboard. The only thing I noticed on this keyboard is that the travel, in other words, how far the keys go down, is a little more shallow than it is on thicker laptops. So that's the only thing that I noticed here, but it's still a very nice typing laptop. You also have a fingerprint reader here on the side and the webcam also supports facial recognition for getting in. The trackpad feels pretty good too. It is a mechanical click pad, so you can't click it this high, but you can certainly click in the lower two thirds of the area here. It's nice and big. It is a bit on the sensitive side. I did find myself making a few adjustments to get it just right, uh, but overall from an input perspective, uh, this is a nice Lenovo laptop, as many of them are in this price point. For ports on this, you've got a couple. You have a full-size USB-A port here. And then on the left-hand side, you have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. So these will work with USB devices, but they will also output video and it will support power going in. So they are full service ports and these will work with high speed USB 4 and Thunderbolt devices. So if you wanted to connect up an external GPU or other device, you can plug it into one of these two ports here. On the other side, you have another full service port, but this one is USB type C. So it won't support Thunderbolt on the right hand side, but it does support it 
on the left hand side. So if you do have Thunderbolt devices, they gotta be on the other side. But otherwise, this will do video and power as well. Your power switch is here, and then you've got a headphone jack. It's good to see those uh, still getting put onto these laptops here so you can connect up a pair of wired headphones to the laptop here. Now it has a 1080p camera at the top and it shoots at 30 frames per second. And I found it works very well no matter what the lighting conditions are. So if you are doing a lot of conferences and stuff, it'll look a lot nicer than the 720p webcams that this class of laptop had a few years ago. There's also a physical shutter here at the top to block the lens. And that's something we've seen on other Lenovo's over the years. Pretty simple, just a little uh, shutter that goes over the top so you don't have to put tape up there and ruin the clean lines of the uh, device here. Now, battery life on this is not spectacular given that it's got one of these high resolution OLED displays. If you keep the brightness down and stick to basic tasks like web browsing and email, you'll get about seven or so hours out of it, but less if you're doing photo and video editing and other more strenuous tasks. And that's just a function of a high resolution OLED display just hard to get a lot of battery longevity out of this while still keeping things thin and light. All right, let's take a look now and see how this thing performs. We'll begin with the basics, some web browsing and work our way up from there. So we'll load up the Chrome browser here and go to my favorite website, nasa.gov, and you can see how quickly everything springs to life here. This machine has a Wi-Fi 6E radio on board. So if you have Wi-Fi 6 at your place, everything will be just as quick as you see here. Super responsive here, as you can see, and uh, no issues doing all of the work tasks that you'll likely throw at this particular computer. So all good there. A little bit earlier, I also tested some YouTube video. This is a 4K 60 frames per second video from my YouTube channel. And we were able to run this without any drop frames. It was playing back perfectly. There were a few drop frames when it first started, but otherwise, it was able to keep up. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got one of the highest scores I have ever seen, 334. So that's a good indicator that this machine will be able to keep up with most basic tasks without issue. We also did something a little more strenuous, video editing. I loaded up a 4K 60 frames per second project on DaVinci Resolve here. And as you can see, it was able to render in that cross dissolve uh, pretty much in real time and some of the other effects that I was running on the video project that I was working on here also processed very quickly. So I think for doing basic video editing and photo editing, this will do just as well on those tasks as it does on the basics. Now, most configurations are going to come with a pen in the box, and I found the pen experience to be quite nice on this. It will detect the pen at about a half an inch above the screen, and once the pen gets detected, it ignores all other inputs, so you can rest your wrist on the display itself. And as I write here, it's got a nice amount of friction on the screen, so it feels very natural. It's not slippery as you're writing on things here, and it doesn't quite feel like pen to paper, but it's got just a nice feel that gives you some precision because it's not just gonna slip around as you're writing here. Another thing that this has is pressure detection. So if I start pushing down harder, I get a darker line and different apps take advantage of this feature in different ways. So all in here, a very nice pen experience. My only issue with the pen though is that there's no place to store the pen on the laptop. So you do have to carry it around separately. But beyond that, a very nice experience here writing on the screen. All right, let's move on to something more fun now, some games. And one of the great things about these new Intel chips is that they are great for casual game players. What you're looking at here is Fortnite running at 2560 by 1600 at low settings. And we were getting 40 to 70 frames per second here. This was kind of the sweet spot for the best trade-off of resolution and performance. We also took a look at a more demanding game here, Red Dead Redemption 2. This we ran at 1280 by 800 at the lowest settings, and we were getting about 45 to 55 frames per second, and sometimes as high as 60 frames per second at that low resolution and low settings. So you're not going to get what you get on a gaming laptop, but you will, I think, get pretty close to what you might experience with the Xbox Series S, for example, but it's portable and you can carry it around with you. So I think from a casual gaming perspective, uh, this laptop will do just fine if you were looking for something small to take off to college and play a game every once in a while. 
And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,915. That is pretty much right within the margin of error with what we got out of the prior version of this laptop from last year. So no generational performance boost here like we typically see from one year to the next, but still a very nice performer for its form factor. We also ran the 3D Mark stress test to see how well this would do under load. There we got a score of 96%. That is very close to the passing grade of 97%. And I suspect if we ran it a few times, we would see a couple of passing grades and a couple of failing grades based on how close it is there. But generally that tells me the performance on this will be pretty consistent across the board and you won't lose all that much performance when you place it under load. This does have a fan on board. It doesn't kick on when you're sitting idle or doing web browsing or working in Microsoft Word. It's only when you really start pushing things that that fan will kick on. It's audible, but it's not all that distracting. They do have some performance modes here that you can adjust to keep that fan from coming on too frequently. So I think if you are someone who's sensitive to fan noise, you're not gonna hear it all that often while you're doing work that requires concentration. And if you are hearing it while trying to write a Word document or something, you can turn down the performance to keep it from kicking on. Now, if you're looking to run operating systems other than Windows, I was able to get Ubuntu to boot up properly on here, the latest version. Everything ran great. All the stuff was detected, including the display, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, and the audio. So it should be a pretty good Linux experience here in addition to the Windows experience. And of course, it comes with Windows 11 built in. So altogether, if you got somebody going off to college, this is a very nice laptop to send them with if they're looking for something running Windows. It's not all that heavy. It's got a really nice display on board for the price point. That display, though, of course, comes with a bit of a battery penalty. So just be aware of that. You're not going to be able to go all day without plugging in. But the performance certainly is there on this one for a whole bunch of different tasks that somebody might need to do in a college environment. And of course, it's got enough horsepower to do some casual gaming as well. So pretty nice laptop here from Lenovo. And we'll have more coming up very soon as well. That's going to do it. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.